Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Mehul and in this video we'll be taking a look at top features which are coming in ES12 or rather I should say ES2021 because ES12 is not an official name. It has been discontinued I think from ES7 or 8 but people still call it that way but it's the correct version is calling it ES2021. So let's take a look at what's new in JavaScript and also should you learn or worry about these things. This is also something I'm going to cover because it seems like JavaScript is updating every year which is true but do you really need to worry about all these updates or not? Let's see. All right, the first update is replace all. Now, if you see the old version of replace all, you would have to manually construct it. And if we take a quick look here, what's happening is that the default string replacement function does not provide you the opportunity to replace every single occurrence. For example, let's say you have a string, my name is Mehul, and you want to replace all the M's with n for example so you might think doing something like this would work but what this would do is this would output only my name is mehul so you see it only replaces the first occurrence there is no traditional replace all function in javascript yet you had to do a regular expression search right where you just do a regular expression match it globally and then replace it you could technically construct your replace all like this but now it's super simple and easy from ES12, ES2021, you could just use replace all on the string and this would just output what you would expect. And you know, code space is not smart in this case, at least because it will only replace twos with zeros. So we'll have one zero, one zero, one zero. Now, yeah, once I gave it a hint, it got smarter. But anyway, that's the first one and it's super cool because now we can just forget about writing the whole regular expression syntax. All right, so should you worry about replace all or should you be worried that this is a new feature and you have to learn something new? I mean, this is a very simple addition to the syntax, right? It's nothing complicated, it's nothing complex and it'll only help you with certain syntax now. So instead of writing something like passing a regular expression like this, you just have to pass a string which makes sense, right? Especially when you have a complicated string where you have to escape the values. So you don't have to worry about it necessarily because it's very simple in the sense. Once you look at it, you will understand. All right, the second feature is promise.any and promises is one of the most important thing in JavaScript. So you should definitely, definitely understand about promises, how they work. This is just an addition over the available methods in JavaScript, but would definitely be helpful. Let's see how this works in case of promise.any. So you can see by the name, it seems like it will resolve the array of promises you pass whenever any single promise passes, right? You can see a very quick example here from MDN, which says, the first promise rejects, the second promise actually just says quick and the third promise says slow. So you can see if you pass all these promises and run the code, it actually gives you quick, even though one promise was rejecting. This means promise.any would just be optimistic in the life, right? In the promise.any's life, it wants to see any one promise succeed. And whenever some promise succeeds, it just gives that output. If no promise succeeds, then we have a new class, new error class, which is aggregate error, right? You can again go a little bit deep into this, but pretty much you will be able to catch it with a dot 10, uh, not the dot 10, but dot catch, or, you know, if you're using try catch like this. So this is something you should learn about. So should you worry about promise dot any? Should you learn about this? I believe if you are already familiar with promises, you would have literally no time about worrying about promise dot any. You can always look it up. You don't necessarily need to sweat about it and learn about aggregate error or anything like this. Just keep your focus on promises and core basics of JavaScript. And whenever you come across this, it will seem easier if you have your fundamentals right. So don't worry about promises dot any. The next edition, which is pretty cool, is about logical operators. Now you see, we already had some logical operators like you would see the syntax is pretty much similar to how you would do x plus equal to 2 which corresponds to x is equal to x plus 2 right and this is a very popular syntax in most programming languages but you can see that javascript now has extended this over to logical and and logical or and logical nullish check as well and this was not a logical operator sorry this was a mathematical operator i mean you're adding something but the idea is with these operators, what I found interesting was we might think just like x plus equal to 2 is x is equal to x plus 2. You might think x and equal to y is in fact equal to x is equal to x and y, right? 
if you go by the analogy. But if you check the MDN documentation, it clearly says that these logical operators are like this and not like this, which was our analogy. And why does it matter? Well, in either case, it will kind of result in the similar value, which this will get, but with the difference that when you evaluate this expression, you always assign X certain value, right? Even if X is not non-zero value, right? In this case, for example, let's say X is five, then the assignment never happens because this was the second condition. So these logical or and logical and slightly differ in the analogical sense even if i don't know if that's even a word but yeah that's that's super interesting and you should know about this at least have uh, this in your back of your mind but would it be much cleaner if you have something like const result is equal to x and y yes it will be much cleaner and i believe you should not use this syntax to make the code confusing, right? It might take a hang of a little bit of JavaScript syntax to get used to this. And if you're seeing this in a lot of places, it will probably be in some compressed libraries or something. But most probably what I also will stick with, at least in the near future, is with a cleaner, much explicit syntax. But yeah, this is definitely cool to consider. And we have pretty much the same equivalence for OR and for nullish check as well. One important thing here, like it's said that you could use this to set default values, right? So what ideally would you use to do is you might want to get this value first, check if it exists and then update it. But now you can do it in a single pass without any performance hit as in that this will not, you know, just rewrite the same value again. And this is especially useful in case of inner HTML or something like this, because you will probably rewrite the event handlers in your HTML if you do that. So that's pretty cool. All right, the next feature which is coming officially in ES 2021, ES 12, that is numeric separators. However, this is not so interesting in the sense because this has existed for a long time in browsers and I have personally used this as well a lot of times. So it got released in 28th May 2019 inside the V8 engine and I believe it was adopted very quickly by a lot of browsers because this has been supported for a long time, but this was technically not in an ECMAScript version yet so it's now available that means you can just go ahead and separate the number with an underscore and it still works in your inside your browser as well so if you take a look in the browser as an example you'll see that you can pretty much enter a number a big number and get confused or what you can do is add these underscore separators anywhere in your number right and it does not matter what the position is as long as this is one underscore and hit enter and you'll see that it gets out as a regular number. So it's just for your developer experience that you're able to read the number inside the code. That's it. All right. And finally, we have an absolutely new feature in ES 12, ES 2021, which is called as VCREF. And it is quite a low level feature. You would probably not need to work with this at all anytime soon as a regular developer. But just to go over this feature, what this does is that now it is possible for you to create a weak reference inside your code to an object. What that means, that means that that object which you just created need not be held into the memory. That means JavaScript can clean it up anytime. And it sounds random and it sounds like a bad advice to use this, but yeah, this exists. And there are good reasons you could use it in a low level system, in some low level programming. Mozilla also gives an example. So let's take a look at this example, what this does briefly. So what we are doing, first of all, is we are creating a counter class, which we'll come to later. But the more important part is the moment we run the script, after five seconds, an element named counter will be removed. And what we do when creating this new counter class is we pass this counter element. Now, the first thing we do is we store this element as a weak reference, not as a regular reference to the DOM element. And this is important. Once we store this, we call the start function and we say, basically, we say right here, we deref the reference. So what this means, it says that get the element from the weak reference if it still exists. That means it's completely fine to access this element, but it is possible that that element might have become undefined or null or whatever. Because right now at the moment, if you run the same code without weak references, what you will see, let's say if I create an element as well here, which says, let's say div id counter, right and we go ahead 
and replace this. So let's give it a font size of 100 pixels so that we can just see. So if I go ahead now and replace this weak ref with just regular element, now this is not a weak reference and we hit enter. Sorry, we have to remove this as well. So this is the final example where we have removed the weak reference and we have removed um, the D reference part as well. And now if I go ahead and hit enter, you will see we have the counter on the screen and after five seconds, once it gets removed, you're going to see that this counter dot ref, oops, counter dot ref still exists right in the memory. So if I click on this, you can see the counter is actually going up even if the element has been removed. Why? Because this is a memory leak right here. We have been pointing this to the strong reference. When we will use weak reference, what will happen is that we will enter this else block because the variable could be garbage collected by JavaScript. Um, the reference could be garbage collected and will no longer be available. So this is one use case, but to be honest, you won't find a lot of use cases of this in your regular language and it will more or less make your job more complicated if you start using it than simpler. Finally, the vcref also brings in finalization registry object, which is just a callback because why the hell won't we have a callback in JavaScript for every single thing, which is a callback to the held value. That means if we were to enter the held value here, the held object, we would get a callback once that object is garbage collected or once that object is cleaned up by JavaScript. Again, something I would say you don't have to worry about, but it's nice to know that these new features exist. All right, so that is all for this video. Hope you understood some of these new features from ES12 and I will make sure our JavaScript course in the full stack learning path on CodeDAM is updated to reflect all of these new features and some hands-on practical exercises as well. If you want to start with full stack web development with JavaScript, the link is in the description of the video. Thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna see you in the next one really soon.